Uh, Northampton Public Works Commission meeting. It's Wednesday, October 28, 5.30 in the evening. Um, this meeting is being recorded by Northampton Community Television. Uh, before we get started, there are two items um, I'd like to address. Uh, one is we have a new member, uh, Wendy Foxen has joined us. She's mm -hmm. filling out um, Terry Colleen's term, as I understand it. And I believe Wendy has met the board members, already knows most of them. We just shook hands for the first yes, time. Just met. So, welcome. Google me. <laughs> <laughs> so, welcome to the commission. Thank you. Wendy has a very interesting background in local and regional government and other things that will be an interesting perspective, okay. I'm sure. Served on committees. And a lot in the right? uh, The other item I want to bring up, and I'm sure we all know it, is um, Jim Dostal passed away mm. uh, recently, and, and uh, most of us had the privilege of working with Jim on on this commission and we knew Jim. I knew Jim professionally through my career as an engineer and uh, and Jim's reputation as we all read about uh, just exceeded, it was almost limitless. So um, it's he was a great asset to the city and uh, he, I'm sure he'll be greatly missed. I don't know if anyone else has anything they'd like to add. Well, well he, he really helped me out when I first came on this committee, but he was stellar in his helping us to pass the storm water because he did that he helped do the the um the uh, video and was just outstanding in terms of you know he wasn't feeling the best but i just thought that was amazing yeah i had heard stories that he was still politicking for the uh, sewer inspection ordinance within the last couple of weeks. He called me last week. <laughs> oh, there you go. Okay. To make sure that I had some documents that the mayor had sent to someone in Holyoke. So yeah. I was very surprised. Yeah. He was an extraordinary public he servant. Really was. I had the great honor. I, when he was told he had to pick either Board of Public Works or City Council, he stayed with City Council and I had the honor of stepping onto this board to fill his vacancy. Mm -hmm. And I felt wonderfully mentored by him. He was always a wealth of information, just always willing to share all his knowledge and his history. And he was just a, an extraordinary citizen in the community. Sure was. All right. You know, we, uh, we worked with Jim a lot, and even when, when he was on the board for so long, but even after he stepped off the board, he would continually come into my office to make sure that I was doing my job, <laughs> <laughs> that the things he felt was important that we were moving forward on. And he was in my office not too long ago asking me about the Hockenham Road flood control pump station and what the status of that project was and what we were doing. So he always kept his uh, finger on the pulse of the things that he felt were most important to the city. So that was always a really good thing. And then I think the other thing is that he's just so widely respected, not only by people in the community, but people within the, the state because of his, um, he was really one of the key people in setting up a system for wastewater treatment plant operator certification. He was a, a very important person statewide in setting up the system that's used today. So he's widely respected in that, in that area. And then, you know, when we do work down at the treatment plant or at the pump station, we have we have, we have great people like John Carver, who's retired, and Jim Zimmerman, who's the chief operator now. Very qualified, exceedingly intelligent people, and a lot of times when we work, they'd be like, well, we could check with Jim on that <laughs> to see what Jim has to say. And uh, people always refer to Jim's vast knowledge from his many years of service to the city as an employee. So those are some things I think that the average person might not might not see was his dedication and knowledge was, was really deep. So. Um, I'm going to miss him coming around into my office and keeping me straight. Tell me what to do. Just want to add one sure. more thing. Thank you. It's great to hear all this. Um, I think I first crossed paths with him about 30 years ago. He was working for the city, and I was running a grant program for the city. And it's nice to hear of all his great accomplishments and his respect across the state. I just have to say he's one of the nicest, kindest people I've met in, the, in my many, many years in local government. And... Um, always had a smile. Just really appreciate mm -hmm. that about him and really care so deeply about the community, not just, you know, the public works, which I see as the core function of local government, <laughs> but um, as I think he did as well. 
so um, I was just very sad to read that, but um, uh, just he was a wonderful man. So where are you going to get your donuts now? Didn't he deliver donuts to you guys? He did. Yeah. And presents at Christmas I and we. Yeah. Well, you filled his seat. <laughs> yeah. <laughs> no, no, no. <laughs> Thank you for reminding me. <laughs> we'll talk. <laughs> All right. Well, let's move on then. Um, next item on the agenda is public comment, but since we don't have any public, I think we can skip over that. Um, next item on the agenda is approval of the minutes of the September 9th. 2015 uh, Public Works Commission meeting. Move approval. Second. Uh, I provided one minor edit. I don't know if anyone else. Yeah. But uh, yeah. I did, even though I wasn't at the meeting, and mm -hmm. so I'm going to say that I'm going to abstain because I wasn't at the meeting. Yeah, but I correct. did notice one little thing that okay. I did. Okay. Any other comments? All in favor? Aye. Aye. Opposed? Abstain. Motion passes. Uh, we have no new business on the agenda. Under old business, um, I had asked that we put this item on, and it's uh, an update from staff on what happens next with the uh, uh, CWMP report now that we've had our public participation meetings. Well, Ned and I have been working with Kleinfelder on the drafting of Chapter 9, which is essentially the written recommendation section that lays out the capital improvements plan, so the five-year plan, and then the longer-term plan. Um, we provided comments to Kleinfelder earlier in the week, and they've incorporated the comments. Um, so the document should be final shortly and ready for submittal to DEP. Next step, I think, in terms of uh, process is to submit the the plan to the uh, to MEPA for their review. And I'm not sure. I didn't have a chance to check with Dave Peterson to find out exactly what their schedule is to submit that to the state for for public comment. But those would be the the next steps. Um, one of the key things in the capital improvement plan was really nothing. New. It was just sort of the presentation and how the information on the projects got, been, got uh, presented. Um, there was a section there about rate impacts, so they were looking for some impact, some some information from us relative to what the rate impacts would be, and that's a little bit of a catch-22. We don't really know what the rate impacts mm -hmm. are going to be because the mayor hasn't decided what the rates would be. So what we what we decided to do is is to provide sort of an example, like the rate impacts might look like this based on some early analysis that we had done at the end of last year. I think it showed a, um, a modest rate impact um, that we had discussed at the end of the year. So we decided to put those numbers in, and then we added some language that the city was doing a uh, water and sewer rate study to look at um, the, a study of the overall way that we determine the rates and what people's bills are, and that will have an impact on what the eventual rate impact would be. But at least as an example, so people get a sense of what um, you know what the impact on their bill would be. So that was pretty important to get that in there, and we needed to have something in there so we could wrap the document up. So that's the way. It, that's the way that's moving forward. So I think that's probably about all there is at this point. Just production mm -hmm. of the final document, and then um, submittal to the state for review. Very good. Have we gotten feedback from the public on? The presentations uh, I tended most of the last one. Um. You know, there wasn't, there hasn't been a lot. Um, Any? There was <laughs> there was some comments. People, a couple of people had comments at the meeting. Mm -hmm. Somebody I think had submitted some written comments to Ned after after the last meeting. So not not a lot. Um, I don't know when the the comments will probably come when, when there's discussion each year about about rate impacts. I know that when we talked about rate increases last year, when the mayor had one of his meetings, that there was a lot of interest and comment at that point. So I think the presentations are important to make the information contained in the report public. So there are people that will go back, although they weren't at the meetings, 
to look at the at the tapes to get more educated on mm -hmm. on what we're trying to do when they when they have the time, sort of on their schedule and not necessarily ours. Mm -hmm. But we haven't received a lot of comment yet. I, I did. Uh, there was a, I mentioned this to you. Mm -hmm. There was a woman who had came came to the meeting and left, and when I left, she was out in the parking lot and approached me and wanted to know. She was upset that we were that the wastewater went into the river, and can it be recycled? And I said, well. If you drive around, you'll notice that's how wastewater is treated, but that's how sort of simple I, I think we need to keep in mind that people really have no idea how this whole thing works. So, But I don't know if you'll get those kinds of questions. Um, but yeah. I thought it was a very good presentation. In the minutes, I saw that you had very good feedback for them on, on what would make it a good, better presentation. So good for you. <laughs> Yeah, it's an interesting process, I think, mm -hmm. to, to try to educate the public about what the problems are, the, the nature of what the infrastructure is, what the issues are, and what the costs are to improve it. I look at going through the public process in the snowmobile utility as a pretty good example of trying to educate the public about what their infrastructure is. Mm -hmm. And, you know, um, Ro mentioned Jim Dostal's videotape about the flood control system. There are a lot of people that drive through the, f the levees every day, they don't know there's a pump station, they don't mm -hmm. know what these levies are or why we have them or what they do. So there's a lot that you have to do to try to educate the public about what you have and I'm not sure what other types of outreach we may decide to do. I think Ned will probably be having discussions with the mayor's office about it. But mm -hmm. the stormwater and flood control, I mean that was I think there were probably close to ten public presentations. Of course that was an ordinance that was proposed so it was a different scenario but I think the point was that we were really trying to educate the public about flood control and all the stormwater systems that we have and their age and the things that need to be done, the types of problems that we encounter. If you have a flood on your street or your drain goes bad or a culvert breaks, mm -hmm. if it impacts you, then you're aware of that sort of thing. But right. across the city, most people may not generally be aware of the, you know, what the challenges are. Mm -hmm. um, is the executive summary posted? I think it is posted, um, and I think Ned posted some of the uh, earlier chapters to the document as well. And we do have we have hard copies of the executive summary on the counter here in the Public Works office, mm -hmm. so that information is generally available. <coughs> I forget who someone people do access that information online because someone I forget who it was now commented that they were. Glad to see that some of the information was posted now that they could look, you know, so they could look at it. So I recall someone asked for it at the meeting at the senior center. Right, mm -hmm. right. So people definitely look at it once it's once it's up there. Mm -hmm. When the final document's produced, we'll get copies in the library and have copies here to the extent that people want to get themselves immersed in the detail. But the executive summary is a very good place to start to get an understanding of, of what the whole process was about. Anything else to jam on this? I'm just going to make a comment about, I was really disappointed. I think that there were four people from the public that came to both meetings combined. Yeah. I mean, I, I don't know that I had high expectations, but um, I'm just sharing that with the rest of the and the list of wa listening public, who were all watching, actually, from home. Right, <laughs> right, exactly. That's a, yeah, you're right. <laughs> Yeah, it's a hard thing. I don't know what the. Oh mean, no, there was nothing. Yeah. Everything was done right. It was. Right. It just doesn't. It's not it's of not interest. Sure. And and rates weren't going up. I mean, it, was, it doesn't have that kind of a threat. Mm -hmm. But it's just an interesting process because it's how our infrastructure works. All right. Uh, next items are under informational. First is. A review of the contracts that have been signed since our last update. Jim, are you prepared to walk us through this? Yeah, I think um, I can give a brief summary. I don't know all the detail ad nauseum, but um, mm -hmm. PJ, PJ will fill in the <laughs> blanks for things that I'm not aware of. Um, so just briefly going through the contracts that, that we um, worked on in October. There's a gas monitoring um, contract with Stantec for gas monitoring at the landfill. We have a post-closure permit with DEP that requires regular gas monitoring, so they, they've been helping us with that work for quite a long time. 
Uh, there was a small change order with um, seal coating for the pavement crack sealing contract. It's small. <laughs> <laughs> we couldn't pay the invoice because it was fifty-four dollars over. So fifty-four dollars over. We yeah. had to do a change order. <laughs> we have a, 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 a contract with AECOM to provide some engineering assistance on the water treatment plant equalization tank repair, and we've got some spalling of an exterior equalization tank, uh, a project that we went out to bid on recently, and they're going to provide some shop drawing review and then send a structural person to inspect the repairs when they're being done. Um, we have a uh, change order number two to the paving and runway improvement contract with Warner Brothers for $32,520. This is all work related to the Pine Street Bridge. When we started taking a closer look at the bridge during the water main job, um, realized that there was a lot of problems with the concrete decking on the bridge, so this involves um, removing um, spalled and, and uh, bad uh, concrete and replacing concrete and installing a, uh, a waterproofing membrane, some other related work to bring that bridge deck up to um, the standard that it needs to be at. It doesn't seem like it's very expensive for the type of work that it is. Yeah, I mean, most, for the most part, the bridge is in good shape, so it's not really structural, it's just more of the decking. Um, and we found even when they started to jackhammer a lot of the loose concrete off, that a lot of the rebar and uh, the bridge itself was actually in very good condition. Mm -hmm. So uh, mainly, mainly just concrete work. And there's supposed to be a waterproof membrane that goes on top of the concrete, and that apparently did not exist on that bridge, so we need to get that water proofing membrane in there. That's part of the work there, but pretty good price. The next two contracts for sodium hypochlorite and um, superfloc polymer or our treatment chemicals at the water treatment plant. So annual contracts for those. Can I ask a quick question? Mm -hmm. Do we sure. are we do we do all our own bidding or do we get involved with group bids with the uh, through the cog or any of that? We do almost all our own bidding. On for certain items, we'll go through um, a state contract. We'll go through a state contract right. or, or other organization if they have procured. Sometimes with vehicles, we'll. I know that we do that. We'll look for vehicles that were procured through another public agency, mm -hmm. and then we'll use that contract to, to buy something. The products we don't typically. They're not necessarily the lowest price right. in right. the state, so we usually do formal bids for almost everything we advertise and mm -hmm. do our own bidding, we seem to get a lower price on everything. Okay. Yeah. Uh, the next, uh, the next uh, one is change order number one for the Connecticut River, Levy, uh, Connecticut River Levy Project with Kingsbury Company. We had, uh, we found a, a sinkhole in the vicinity of a tow drain that um, that, occ that occurred near the Connecticut, uh, along the Connecticut River levee. Um, we believe we're actually investigating the cause of the uh, of the sinkhole. We had under another contract, we had AECOM and their subcontractor, National Water Main, doing cleaning and televising of the tow drain. They got they got their nozzle to their cleaning equipment stuck in the tow drain. Uh -huh. and think that the damage to the levee was an, it was a result of their work that they were doing. So we're in a little bit of investigation phase and we're trying to get some recovery for the money um, that we needed to pay Kingsbury. So we were fortunate that Kingsbury was the contractor we had on site doing repair work to the levee when we found the sinkhole, which was due to this other contract. So because it was a hole and a safety hazard, we authorized Kingsbury to make the repair for us, which they did satisfactorily. And now we're following up with AE Common National Water Main to try to recover some of the costs because of the damage. We had some questions about due, due diligence and procedures that they were using and whether they were at fault for any of the damage that occurred. So we're trying to sort through those facts right now. Um, the next contract, sodium carbonate, also a uh, chemical used at the water treatment plant. Um, potassium permanganate. Uh, contract is a chemical used at the wastewater plant, sewer enterprise fund money for that. The next contract was a traffic signal 
uh, contract for $22,760 was for a series of audible pedestrian um, signals that we put at a couple of intersections in town. It was uh, some recommendations that had been made that Ned was following through on there. Can you say where, they're, where they are? Cons, um, Con Street and Old South Street. And then mm -hmm. he said at the intersection of South, Old South, and New South. So I was trying to picture the deep south. The deep south. <laughs> mm -hmm. So those two is what okay. Ned described to me. He thinks that they were right. I didn't check with Maggie to make sure the job was done. And these are new or replacing? They are new. Mm -hmm. Okay. So we're trying to add. I think Ned was getting in, input from um, different committees in the city about places where it would make sense to have these audible signals. So we're trying to prioritize <coughs> those. The next contract is for a roadway line painting for $50,000 with markings in general fund money to do road, roadway line painting. Schedule's uncertain, we're getting kind of late in the season, we'll just into November for line painting work. Um, this is a shift for us. Normally, all the roadway line painting we would do um, with our own staff, and we've just been having problems with finding adequate staffing to keep up with the roadway line painting, so we decided to go up to bid to see what the price would be and how that might work. And my understanding, I don't remember what our estimate was, but I, I believe that the, um, that the bid came in lower than we expected. We were quite pleased with the, uh, with the bid. So we'll see how the contract goes with markings and I can see if that's a change we want to make moving forward. But it's difficult, I think, for us to get all the line painting done in a timely fashion. So having some help with it makes a lot of sense, particularly if the cost is competitive. And generally what we do is we have four of the guys working third shift and either they have to stay along for their regular day shift if they're needed or they just go on third shift and do it and it's really just not enough it's really difficult for mm -hmm. them to get it done so um what was it because you were under i mean i, I think that this probably has the implications for the reuse committee because they yell at us i i take it but um that Thank that you. the sign painting is not done at the reuse center. It's not done. It's not done. And I would have mentioned it several times to Ned. This and I understood the um, um, the line painting to be um, uh, existing staff. Yep. But was it like overtime or extra work? Yeah. And so it's, it's just that they couldn't keep up with the amount that needed to be done. Mm. For line painting? Mm -hmm. Yes. Because the same guys that do the line painting, they do the sweeping on right. third shift. So right. they okay. still have to work their regular shift too. But what makes it different this year from previous years, I guess, is my question. I think we struggle with it every year. Yeah. Ah, okay. And I think this year we decided, you know, I'm a, I'm a, I'm a, I don't get involved in the streets work that often, but I'm, I'm a big one in terms of evaluating how we do any task here at DBW. And if we have things that we really struggle to do, I'm constantly asking if there's a way that we can get them done, either more either by adding staff or more efficiently doing what we do, or by bringing somebody else in to do it. And I think this was one of the ones where, like Richie was just saying, it's going to have a really hard time this year with the staff that we had and people at sick and putting crews together. And a lot of it is overtime work, as BJ had said. So it's yeah. it's at night, putting crews together, which robs from what you want to do during the day. So we're really we're crippled there in a lot of ways in terms of the general funding to get streets work done. So we'll give it a shot um, this year and see how it goes. But if it results in our ability to get the line painting done in an efficient way every year, then it, that would be the way that I would recommend that we do it. Unless we can add staff, which doesn't seem right. like it will be something that will be forthcoming anytime soon. So, but it is sort of late in the year to be doing line painting. Right. And part of that was because of, it took us a little while to get the contract out right. because we had never done a line painting contract of this magnitude. So it's what's, which streets, you know, how many linear feet, which yeah. markings do you need to do? And then it, it, um, it fell on Rich Parcelletti and, and Dave Valletta in engineering to kind of put the RFP together to get it out. And David is busy. If you look at all the, you know, if you go to our blog and you look, David's the one that posts the schedule for all the construction during the summer. I mean, he's involved in a lot of those projects, and so he's pretty straight out. So finding time for him to work with Rich on the RFP was was difficult this year, and I think that may have caused a little bit of the delay. 
what if we have to do it next year? Now we know we have a template that we know will work and we can use it. So a little bit of transitional time, I think, there. Is the contract good through the end of the, through the spring season? Yeah. So, mm -hmm. yeah. but you know, m many other communities do it, so we could have found a template from another community, I suppose. Yeah, sometimes, but I, it's, these end up being very specific in terms of the streets oh, yeah. and which lines and how it's going to be laid out, and then we needed to do our own assessment and inventory of the lines that were in bad shape, the ones that were disappearing, the ones right. that were the highest priority. So there was a lot of time, I think, in the field as well, mm -hmm. driving, you know, because after a while, you'll lose the line painting totally, and you won't even be able to see it, which makes it more difficult to reproduce because you need to lay it out again. So I think a lot of it was legwork that, um, that David and Rich had to do to determine what were the worst streets and the highest priority, and to add those, and then to get the linear feet that we needed. And so there's a lot of sort of site-specific stuff, but, um, I just was wondering, did you, you said line painting, not sign painting, correct? I, I may have said sign, but I meant line. So <laughs> I feel like that's still up in the air, what, what you asked about. Well, no, what he's saying is it, the, the sign painting in, at the parking lot at the reuse center never happened. Sign or line? What, did I say sign? <laughs> <laughs> line painting. That's good. Um, <laughs> the line painting had not happened when we kept asking about it and I kept saying, well, it's on the list, it's on the list. So we didn't, this is all new information and I wish we had just known it sooner to be, because I kept nagging and, and um, we didn't, um, we had never shared any of this, but I'll, I'll send it to um, the reuse committee about why it hasn't happened so far. And it was, and I just kept saying that I knew that the reuse center was not as significant as crosswalks, for instance, but, um, but I didn't know all these other things. But but it sounds great if we can come up with a new system to make it more feasible for next year. That sounds great, Jim. Right, and that may open time for our own staff to do smaller line painting work, and then if the main streets are being done by yeah. by yeah. contractor. Yeah. 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 To answer your question, it's the important thing. <laughs> yeah. Yes, yes. <laughs> there could be questions about signs too, just so you know, because signs is another thing that, <laughs> oh, <sorry. laughs> uh, that I want to open the doors box. <laughs> sometimes it takes a while to get signs done. Yeah. Anyway. Um, next uh, contract amendment uh, three for the bituminous concrete um, contract. This was the 24, 2014 contract with Warner Brothers. Um, Actually wrapping up the end of that contract from last year is a $40,000 change order, basically a balancing change order in that contract so that we can pay the final invoice. That's a $40,000 change order and the original contract value was about $1.86 million, so in the big scheme of things it was a fairly small change order reflective of a lot of the things that came up during the course of the job that we asked Warner Brothers to do. So. And very happy with one another. So the work last year and this year on the streets has been really good. Um, next contract for Winter Salt with Morton Salt is uh, $399,000, which will buy us about 4,000 tons of salt. And then told me that typically we use about 3,000 plus tons per winter, depending on the weather. In the sense of that, um, the next. Group of uh, contracts is for snow plowing. Number of uh, routes that we've uh, we'll be using contractors to cover this year. Uh, top of the next page, we have a change order number two with GZA Geo Environmental for sixty-five hundred dollars for Roberts Meadowbrook Channel improvements. Um, during the course of the design of the channel improvements, um, we found that some of the there was an increase in some of the environmental permitting that we needed to do, so we um, had to talk to them about uh, a change order for scope for some state permitting. Um, because we're doing a, so the project here is at Sandy Beach downstream of the, of the dam. Um, the channel needs to be realigned and stabilized. So in the course of realigning the channel, um, there's, we're exceeding thresholds that would require a dredging permit. and. Um, an application with DEP in Boston for that, so it was something that wasn't wasn't originally scoped. Um, the next contract for $9,500, also with GZA Geo Environmental, this is for the Upper Roberts Meadow Dam Reservoir. This money is um, all related to their assistance 
um, that they've been giving us in replying to questions that FEMA has about our grant application. We received preliminary notification from FEMA that a $1.3 million grant um, to remove the dam had been recommended to FEMA and that was, that's been a, quite a while ago when we received that notification. Since that time, we've been having some difficulties dealing with FEMA who, someone, they, they received some public comment um, that concerned them saying that they had, FEMA said that they had received some comment from another, en they said another engineer that was counter to information that GZA and the city had submitted and um, we asked for copies of that information to figure out what, what it was so we could respond to it and we found that all they would provide us was a, a, a scanned copy of a Mike Kirby blog with some information that he had about whatever he felt about the dam. So it wasn't exactly engineering information that was submitted, but for some reason it has raised a lot of issues with FEMA and FEMA has now continued to ask us to do things and then when we reply to their questions they come back we answer one question they have and they come back with two more so we're going down a road so we've spent 9500 with GZA and the questions from FEMA <coughs> seem to be broadening so the problem that I'm having in trying to manage the project is that one is we're wasting we're potentially wasting a lot of money replying for a grant that we may never get and we'd asked FEMA just to tell us straight out if you're not going to give the city the grant, let us know, and then we won't continue to spend a lot of money going after it. But they won't give, I don't feel like they're giving us a straight answer, like, no, these are all just sort of normal questions, which we don't feel are exactly normal. But So the problem is that GZA is, um, they're helping us, they're spending a lot of money, but we don't feel like we're getting closer to the end with FEMA. So we're at the point now where um, we're having some, Ned and I are having some discussions with the mayor's office about how to proceed uh, because they're, because of all the delays in getting the FEMA grant funding, we might have to delay the breach of the dam and the stream restoration associated with it if we had to wait for the FEMA grant to actually come through because our schedule at the mm -hmm. moment is we're hoping to be out to bid in the late winter with a spring start on the project. Now the earliest we might get FEMA grant money now would be late summer next year so we're starting so we're spending a lot of money on a grant we may never get and it's delaying a project that we feel is very important to do so we're sort of at the point where a decision needs to be made about whether we want to continue to go after the money it's a huge grant obviously mm -hmm. so um, we felt like getting the mayor's input into how to proceed would, would be the best thing um, d have you or should you just call them and say we'd like to meet and just get it all out there, you know, rather than this piecemeal and it costs more here and there? Does it make sense to just find out who it is and sit with them? And We've had several conference calls with MEMA and mm -hmm. FEMA officials. Um, mm -hmm. I think part of the problem is that um, some, of the FEMA inf some of the FEMA comments now we think are coming from FEMA in Washington. So there's a local person and then we think that they're getting information because when we ask a lot of questions about why are you asking for this type of thing, it's like coming from a, it's coming from a distant source. Um, and they will ask us questions and then when we give them the information, they'll be like, that information's, that's not what you really need to do this analysis. We, we think you should do something else. I'm like, well, you just asked us for that specific inf information and we gave it to you. So um, it's a little frustrating kind of getting to the end point. We did talk to the mayor about it. The mayor was going to contact Senator Warren's office to contact someone in Washington to say, we have this dam project. We want to know what the story is, mm -hmm. what the straight story is. Because if there's, you know, if there is a way to get to the end, I mean, we've never run into this problem. We, we get FEMA grants somewhat commonly. They're, they're useful. We have two other FEMA grant projects we're working on right now. We've had no problem. I don't know what the story is of this one, why it's mm -hmm. caught in a very strange place. Uh, the 9500 was for work the last couple months getting technical information but yeah it's a challenge um, and then the last um, contract here is for FEMA has a mitigation grant application for the King Street Brook we've asked CDM Smith to do a grant application for us to do um, culvert improvements down by state state and started street where we had that flooding last year mm -hmm. CDM has been um, 
working on a design of either a new culvert or a relief culvert or some other flood mitigation in the area where that flood occurred. And uh, they're simultaneously trying to wrap up a technical analysis we contracted with them to do before and also to get this grant application in. So we have hopes of getting some money to, uh, to build some improvement out there. It was nice to hear that when we had that real intense rain a month or so ago, that there was no problem in that location. I thought for sure we'd be, be routinely the basements fill up with water over there. Yeah, I've followed that. Mm -hmm. Does yeah. that hurt, hurt our, does that mean we did something and we're less needy of this? No, of course not. <laughs> okay. The system functions better because of the maintenance we pay a lot of attention to the maintenance of the culvert that's there mm -hmm. so that we can maximize the efficiency of what we have. It's still really undersized. It won't pass a 25-year storm, mm -hmm. the culvert. So too small for the application. Um, but we have, if we keep the culvert clean, we can get up to like three inches of rain in about, I don't know, Ten, eight, eight hours maybe. We had about a three inch rainstorm in eight hours last year and we didn't get any flooding. So when I when I look at the, we didn't know what that number was. Every time it rained last year after the flood, we were out there. Richie and I were out there like every rainstorm. If we were getting heavy rain, because we didn't really know what to expect. Last year we got a rainstorm that was about three inches in maybe six or eight hours and it able, was able to pass the water. So now when I look at the forecast, I'm, I look to see like we're supposed to get a lot of rain tonight but we're not supposed to get more than three inches, so um, it's a function of the intensity, obviously. But anyway, it works better than it did, but we're still trying to make it better. Thank you. Next on the list is the Pulaski Park update. So this is a sort of a standing informational item on the agenda. I don't know how much you want to hear from me about Pulaski Park as it, as it continues. Um, the construction fencing is off Mountain View. Contracting has, you know, they've started the demolition work. Um, they're focusing on they're focusing in on, on a lot of demo work right now, and also there's, there's sort of a process because it's a bus it's a bus stop with bus shelters. We're um, coordinating with them, um, moving of the bus shelter, and we're also in the process of having a new bus shelter um, procured by. Uh, PBTA so that when we move the shelter location and pour a new pad, there'll be a new bus shelter structure that will be installed. I'm not sure exactly what the schedule is for that, but those are some of the things that we're coordinating at the moment. And there will be some work on the Main Street sidewalk that Mountain View is trying to do, so there'll be a, uh, a period of time this fall where um, that sidewalk will be closed on Main Street next to the park, and then we'll have a temporary pedestrian way in Main Street, so we're going to set that up shortly and get that new sidewalk built and then get that open for next year. And then the work will extend into the spring, is, which is when we'll do most of the planting. But So mainly demo work, concrete work, sort of hardscape work, bus stop related work um, are the types of things that are going on now. So there's a lot, um, but it's going pretty well. We've got a really great contractor and we're happy with what they're doing. And then we have pending, you know, for the last meeting I mentioned pending grant applications for phase two. We we're in front of the, the CPA um, commission right now for money, and then we have a CPA grant, a C, a park grant, I'm sorry, with the state that we're waiting to hear from uh, the state on. And last year, it was around this time, I think it was October 20th when we did last year, it, when we received the $400,000 grant, so should be this fall, we'll find out. Here. I noticed that the, they put up the fence, they put up a, a green liner. I think that's often used to control dust and loose debris flying around. And then I noticed it came down. At least the portion of it came down. And then I noticed it went back up again. <laughs> and uh, I was uh, kind of glad it came down because it's nice to look in and see what's going on. And I'm wondering if we could just add some windows. You know, that's probably not in the contract, but I, um, and that, when I say add windows, I mean like somebody with a razor knife. Got a, got a few squares here and there. Yeah. A few up here and a few down here <laughs> for the older and younger citizens. Yeah, the, <laughs> the uh, we had some discussions with 
Mountain View about the fencing. They didn't have it secure enough when we had those strong winds and it got blown over. So that was a little bit of a fire drill on, mm -hmm. on Saturday when that happened. Mm -hmm. What they've worked to secure the fence better, um, and they made some adjustments. They cut some slits near the green sign, and I think they removed some of the ties at the bottom so that it could open. And we were concerned about just aesthetically downtown without the screen. You know, it's a construction site, it will be dusty, it's just not really conducive to people's enjoyment of downtown. Yeah. Um, we are working, I think it'll be up um, hopefully by next week. We had we had a screen printed image of what the park, from some of the Stinson renderings of what the park will look like when it's done. Mm -hmm. So we're going to take that green fencing off that you, that you referenced, Gary, and, and replace it with a screened image from the renderings that Stinson did. Mm -hmm. So it'll look a lot nicer. And I think the intent was to have a couple of sections cut out so that people could look in but we were concerned about aesthetics and also just the nuisance sort of the it's the yeah. you know uh, i know exactly what you mean I, yeah. and i i agree a green fence does make a difference on a windy day yeah so we will uh but i think the intent was so that people could look in um we've also mounted a, a webcam mm -hmm. oh um, that's good that's online so you can see the construction site from the from the main city's main website so you can you can log into that and check things out. Well, the camera's mounted over on Main Street by Fresh Pasta, so it's sort of a Main Street view into the job site. Mm -hmm. People that are curious. About and it's it. on the general website, city website, or it's on it DPW? Or? It, the link is off the main website, so when you go to the city's main website, I think there's a little thing for Plasky Park you can click on, and then that goes to a link for the webcam and the mayor. The mayor recently did a mayor's report interview with Simpson Associates about the design of the park, and that came out really nice. So that, I think there's a link to that mayor's report as well. All from the main website. All the plans and stuff are on the DPW website for Pulaski Park, so if you're interested in all the details, that's there. there. <laughs> so it's going well. Anything else you can on this? And the next item was a paving update. So <clears throat> I'm trying to wrap up the paving work here. Um, the first week in November, um, Warner Brothers is going to be reclaiming Milton Street. I think they're scheduled on Friday to do that. And then they'll be coming in with paving crews on November 5th, starting November 5th, and then working until they're done. And my understanding is that Pomeroy Terrace, Clark Ave, Maple Street, Florence Road, Pine, and Nonatuck up here are all um, streets that need to getting the final overlay work. So beginning in November, everything should be buttoned up and they'll be out of town. So, yeah. When would you estimate the Pine Street Bridge will be finished and will they be able to pave that before the end of the season? Yeah. Oh, excellent. Yeah, it's good. Warner Brothers get out there right away to do the concrete repair work, so um, that'll be all ready to go. So, so when you specific? They'll be November here November fifth. Okay. And I don't know how many days it'll take them—a couple of days, probably—to do all the uh, the remaining overlay. But yeah, that that intersection will be back open. It's been a tough area, I think, for residents. I mean, it's been closed for a while, and we had the you know it was a. The situation where we had the water main project, the, a large city transmission main through there, and then we decided to improve the road while we were there, and I think it sort of prolonged the inconvenience for residents that travel in that part of town. Mm -hmm. But um, when it's done, it'll be great, and then you know we won't be interrupting that intersection for a while. Mm -hmm. There is work going on up on Florence Road, just past there too, it seems. Or is that is that related? It's, is yeah, that a drainage issue? Yeah, it's all related to a water okay. main. Yeah, water main. So it'll all be nice. And, uh, it'll it'll be nice. There was a little bit of a drainage issue that we discovered when we were doing the water main, but it was all sort of peripheral to the water main mm -hmm. that we were doing. It'll be nice when it's done. You can ride your bike over Pine Street Bridge, though. Yeah. Showed you. I did. <laughs> yeah, I walked. I walk over. I, I walk over it. The, the bridge is open okay. from that standpoint. Well, then I guess so. <laughs> But you're on the sidewalk when you're riding your bike, you're not... Uh, no, I got off and I walked. I'm sure oh. I walked. <laughs> <laughs> but not the 
Yeah, but, <laughs> but, not, but not the not concrete. The, I mean. No, 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 no. Yeah. So I did not want concrete. Because if I see tire treads on the new car, no, no, no. <laughs> how about initials? MJ, MJ, MJ. I'll never know. We'll know who to contact. We had our inspector out there taking a look. Our bicycle inspector. Um, so yeah, so that that's you. No. Anything else on the paving for Jim? Well, that completes the formal agenda. Wendy, what we usually do at the end of the meeting is go around and see if there's anything the commissioners or the staff want to bring up. I was going to ask questions about paving. I was on there, and thanks for the report. I know that um, I guess it's Maple Street. It seemed like work was done in June, and then it sort of got left alone. And people have asked me a bunch of times about it, and I didn't know. But it sounds like I saw guys out there this morning, and it, I don't know what they were doing exactly, but it sure looked like they were almost ready to pave. Yeah, it's. You know, I don't know the ins and outs of it, but there are multiple aspects to the to the paving contract, and a lot of it is related to you know resetting structures. And you'll notice that we're putting in ADA compliant yes. ramps at all the crossings. So I recognize that as a reason for it to go longer. Right. Not right. You know, why, why did you tear up the road? Right. I should have done that before. Because there's certain efficiencies when they have the reclaimer in. These are things that you you would understand yes. when they're yes. when they're reclaiming. It's more efficient if they do all the reclaiming while they're doing it. Yes. Um, and then there ended up being some delays because of other components of the There were some underground utilities that got repaired, it looks like to me. Yeah. The section on the hill where you, it was so bad that you ended up doing an overlay on it <coughs> and there were cuts through it. So I knew that was, I think, gas lines, just uh, the laterals, you know, the uh, T's. Right. I think they replaced. So the projects end up being pretty complicated when you look, and, and part of it, I think it's such a large contract too, that they're really, it's not, Maple Street's just not, it's, you know, a dozen city streets right. that's that right. trying to handle. And mm -hmm. The delay in the final paving, I think was in part related to reclaiming Milton Street, which we decided to add, it wasn't in the original contract. We decided to <coughs> add that, we took another street off, and that sort of changed the whole aspect of we wanted Milton Street to be ready for final paving when the other streets were gonna be done. Mm. So the schedule evolves during the course of the job. But yep. Uh, well, it's great to see it yeah. close. And yeah. the paving that is done is wonderful. Yeah. Wendy? Uh, well, I just want to start off by saying I've been around the city for a long time and lived in it for the last almost 20 years. And I have to say that I, I've never seen so much work, good work being done but so much work being done as I have over the last year and it's thrilling and wonderful and thank you. Um, and I noticed that uh, CDOT was here, MassDOT is going around to the various communities doing walk-arounds with the officials. And um, I live out where I go, th I go through the uh, Meadow Street, uh, you know, okay. Lily. I just want to know whether that intersection has ever been looked at. I, I'm really, anxious every time I'm going from Meadow Street through there. Can't really see the cemetery and the library and people coming around and <coughs> signaling. Just curious about that. And um, and also just uh, West Farms Cemetery, but I'll talk to you about that another time. Uh, but just, just on my mind, you know, as I anxiously go through there. I don't know the answer to that. Okay. Um, I can talk to Ned. Ned is really more the point person on most things related to intersections and city streets. Okay. I do more of the utility work. Okay. I could ask him about that to see what the situation is. I've just never yeah. seen it come up, and it really is a safety issue. I'm, I've not been aware of, I mean, I'm aware of You walk there, I think. I, I do, and, I, and yeah. I'm aware in the, within the office, obviously, of just about everything that goes on, but the history of that intersection with the Ned has never had a discussion at Transportation and Parking Commission, there may be things he's aware of that I'm not. Okay. I'm not aware of that ever having been discussed, but it is a little bit of a, it's a little dangerous, mm -hmm. and then we often get comments about about the park, where the fountain is, mm -hmm. because people like to sit there, but how do you get there safely? There's actually no crosswalk mm -hmm. to get to it. Um, I think Councilor Klein has been asking questions about that. Cross your fingers. <laughs> but, you know. Look, look before you cross, basically, but often people will be over there enjoying the fountain and it's a little dangerous to get over there. Well, it used to be two-way traffic in front of the BFW. Right. Yeah. That was the last safety improvement that they made there. 
Yeah. Some signage. Feeling, I think there's new signage there too. Relative. You must be feeling it because of the detour with the Pine Street Bridge close. No, it's been constant the whole time. Yeah, yeah. It, I don't see more traffic there. I see it more t down the other end uh -huh. at Spring and Meadow. Uh -huh. And and people are behaving fairly well, I must say. You know, they're driving mm -hmm. carefully, which is nice. Mm -hmm. New covers to the area. <laughs> Jim? Um, just a couple things. I, I wanted to, um, to make the commission aware that um, you may have noticed in the paper a little while ago that the water superintendent had been placed on administrative leave for some issues that the city is investigating. The outcome of, of that work isn't known at this point. In the absence of a water superintendent, Ned and I have been performing those functions for the water system. Mm -hmm. So I spend my mornings at the water division with the distribution staff and Ned starts his day up at the water treatment plant working with the chief operator. And making sure that um, we're taking care of everything that we need to take care of. So you may have noticed that and, and had questions um, mm -hmm. on it. So, so how we're managing it in the absence of the superintendent. A um, couple of other things. In a mere 35 minutes, there will be a public informational input session on the Bridge Street Cemetery. So we have Martha Lyon, who's a landscape architect that we're, the city has contracted with to do a preservation plan for um, the Bridge Street Cemetery will be leading a public uh, input session today. It, it's tonight it's at the Senior Center. So if you're looking for something to do, you can swing by. Ro will be there <laughs> in her role as a committee member on the Bridge Street Cemetery. So it's an exciting project. I think there's a lot of really great and interesting information coming out about the cemetery. Martha's work is really great. She has a lot of enthusiasm for, for the project. So that'll be tonight at 7. A um, couple of other project-related things. We had two water main breaks within the span of two days at Police Street up in Florence. It's an old asbestos cement water main, and we're very concerned about the condition of the water line. So we had signed a contract with Tate and Howard to have them do a design of a new water main, and we're going to see if we can get it done before the weather changes this fall. So it's kind of a big rush to try to get that done. but. Based on the condition, what we're seeing for the pipe, we're afraid that we, it may just continue to cross <coughs> areas and we could have a real problem with it. Does it change order to the current contract? It was a new contract with mm -hmm. Tate and Howard. I don't know. No, I mean for the construction. No, we're going to go out to bid. Oh my gosh. Yeah. What does that mean? <laughs> Take too much time. time. It takes too, too much time, time to get it done. It's going to get fall. really cold before you get yeah. it. Yeah. Yeah. We're going to see if we, we might get lucky. We it just sent them out today. They're not even listed yet. It will be highly weather dependent. Um, when I when I when I rolled out the schedule, the earliest we could start would be the beginning of December. Mm -hmm. So I don't know if we'll make it or not. But we're gonna try. And you usually won't, you won't get pavement then, probably. No, right. definitely won't. So, but the water main is it's really soft, and mm -hmm. you know, it's pieces of the pipe are just sort of blowing apart. Where it's is not, this? It's Bliss Street up in Florence. Oh. So the water main's in really bad shape. And then I guess the other thing is that down in the Riverside area, we have a contract with Ludlow Construction to do a sewer replacement on Warner Street. And that project had been delayed all summer because of some work that the gas company needed to do. So Almost done. Right. So that work is going to be starting soon. I think maybe... Uh, beginning next week I think Ludlow is going to start on that sewer job so we're not really you know usually it's a wind down in construction season but we still have a number of things that are active and probably will be until it snows but I think that's all I have. BJ? I'm good. MJ? I'm good. David? I'm okay. No. Do you need the reuse? The, the uh, reuse facility on the Glendale is closing this Saturday. Mm -hmm. That's the last so the, 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 the final date is you know, the end of September, end of October. And the opening date is um, April 1st next year. And I mean, that, the intent is that this is, will be a permanent schedule. Of course, it's all manned by volunteers, and there's no heat in the building. So it's a seasonal. It's a, I call it a building. It's really a shed, mm -hmm. <laughs> and uh, it's not, and never was thought to be suitable for mm -hmm. really year-round or even an extended season. Is that is there public notice about that? 
in well, the newspaper or told, whatever. Um, I don't know if something made it into the newspaper, but the, the, user. yeah. the users are out there not and they know that it will happen. Mm -hmm. And there are signs all over the place. But the uh, over, overall, I think the, the committee is, is very happy with the results, the, with the volume, and one of the tricky things theoretically would be the balance of in, incoming donations with what the public is taking away, and they found creative ways to get mm -hmm. stuff, excess stuff removed, you know, reprocessed for, for one or another purpose. So th there has been a balance main, maintained that has really worked out. The volunteers have put a lot of labor and thought into it. It's, it's unusual to have this much labor in a, in a volunteer ongoing project. And the, and the volunteers will continue meeting um, twice a month to sort of smooth out the various problems right. and maybe hopefully uh, expand the existing footprint, you know, so. Thank you. Is there anything else? No. The only thing I have is uh, talk about when we might hold our next meeting. I think our... It seems to be easy. It's never here for the No, it's, it is a So the eleventh is a holiday. We're not the eleventh is a holiday, yes, of course it is. Um Veterans Day. And the twenty fifth is probably like the day before Thanksgiving. It is. Also a holiday. We yeah, it's a holiday. Also a holiday. Uh, we're not here. I'm not available on the 18th. Me either. I'm not either. So, perhaps, considering how light our agenda is, we can go to and do one in early December. Second. Second? Mm -hmm. Second of the ninth? I don't mm -hmm. think it matters to me. It doesn't matter. You want to do the first week, since we're missing a yeah. whole month? Let's do December 2nd. December 2nd. Great. I think that completes it. Is there a motion to adjourn? Yes. All in favor? Aye. We are adjourned. Aye.